ya. What's going on? Hang out live. It's Drake here. I think I'm the only one here. Where's Rob? No, you don't hear me? Why am I not in there? Well, I, I hear you, but I certainly don't see you, senor. It's just that kind of Halloween-y thing where you're really just kind of like ghostly. I'm just ghostly. Ghosting me. Ghosting you. No, ghostly. ghostly. Ghost. All right. Ghostly, not ghosting. Go something. Catfishing? Catfishing. Mm. Beer in one hand, right? Beer in one hand and a fishing pole in the other, and I'm catfishing. Oh, I was going a different way, but I know you were. All right. Welcome to the Hangout Live tonight. It's Robbie and Drake. It's me. It's me. And I saw Mike kind of peeked in during the intro video. Did you see that? No, oh, I didn't see that. It's like, what's up? And then he was gone. Ah. Uh. He was kind of cool, though. I was, I was digging on it. So check this out, man. In uh, some some news for the Hangouters, our, our dear friends, Kim and Brad, the uh, folks that supply us with our wine every week, and we love them for it. They uh, Kim came down with coronavirus. So we're definitely saying a prayer to her and, and Brad and the family and get well soon. And their wine is currently in, in uh, quarantine. It is. We it, both got a box of wine that we can't open. Yeah. But it was good of Brad to let us know, man, and reach out to us first thing this morning and say, hey, don't open the box we sent you this week. Right. Right. But I, I mean, I was thinking about drinking some wine tonight. Um, the O'Brien sent me. Yeah. But I'm just not really in the mood for drinking. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I just can't, it takes me weeks and weeks before I can, well, I mean, I guess I can have, you know, that's straight tequila, right? Sure. sure. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Why do I look so dark when I come back here? I don't know. Oh, it looks good anyway. So uh, we've had a long week, brother. How was your Halloween? Was it good? It was good. I went out to uh, Arizona. Um, because they, I don't know, banned is the word, but uh, banned trick-or-treating here. And I really wanted to take my daughter trick-or-treating being as, you know, she's getting on the later end. Either, you know what, even if she wasn't, it wouldn't matter. She's still trick-or-treating. I wanted her to be able to trick-or-treat. So I made the drive and we trick-or-treated in Arizona. Which goes, Tucson or what? We went to Tucson. We went to uh, Mesa first to visit uh, my brother. Michael and his son Michael and see all the new babies in the family and stuff and his son Alex and all of them and then the next morning we drove up to Tucson got there right in time to get ready and shoot over and trick-or-treat and then play games and then I mean it was a whirlwind got up the next day and drove home wow <laughs> yeah that's cool though I'm glad you got to go yeah it was cool at least you know we got to trick-or-treat Absolutely. So tonight's show, dude, I've been anticipating it. I've been waiting for it. Yeah, awesome, dude. I think we just bring him in. We don't have to play around with it anymore, do we? Well, you don't want to hype it up? Yes. I'm going to hype. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to hype it up. <laughs> dude, I'm going to make you run the controls, be, you know, so we don't derail. I don't know if I can run them from here. You I'll can. I can pass over ownership of the, of the controls. Be Sorry about that. Jack Russell's calling me. I was like, Jack, come on, I'm on the show. Maybe we'll just invite him in. <laughs> right? Probably, probably not, right? Probably so. Yeah. That's not what you... I was trying to show. Is that what you were trying to show? That's not at all what I was trying to show. Well, I'll figure it out later. All right, Mike, Mike Bailey, drummer for Brett Michaels Band. Let's go ahead and bring him in here, man. Because okay. this, this is going awry already. It's... <laughs> been a long week off it has been a long week off i'm telling you right let's bring yep. Mike. we're out of rhythm we got to get our rhythm baby come on yeah i'm kind of sleepy all that driving makes you sleepy you know what i mean right mike what's going on brother what's happening can you hear me oh that yeah. sounds great now all you right. sound good man yeah right. now i gotta change my light up so i can look better for you hey there, no man. i think you look fantastic can you just dim it down a little darker that's all <laughs> there you go <laughs> perfect thank you <laughs> come on we can't see we want to see that beautiful face come on man 
How you doing, brother? How's things going for you, man? What's happening, Drake? Good to be I'm on the show. Good. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. So, Mike, we've been anticipating this for a while now, and dude, I'm I'm so stoked. I'm stoked to see you wearing a Sun Records shirt. Girl, right? TCB, baby. Got the TCB on the wrist too. Nice, nice. Robbie don't know nothing about this. What you know about the the Elvis Presley there, Robbie? What do I know? He was the king of rock and roll. That's what I know. There we now go. You can, now you can kick with us, bro. Now you okay. can kick. That was a close one. <laughs> I thought you were gonna boot me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, out of here. So, Mike, let's talk a little bit, brother. You know, you know how the show rolls. We, we're going to take it all the way back to the beginning. All right. All right. Uh, I've done a little bit of homework on you. I know you sent me some photos and sent me some stuff to talk about, but I've done my own homework on you. In fact, I want to go back to raised in Northern or Northern Virginia, correct? Yes, sir. Actually, I was born in D.C. and raised in Northern Virginia. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. And at seven years old, you got into a talent show with a few of your friends. Yes, sir. Hey, nice true. research. Nice research. I like that. Thanks, brother. Thanks. So, uh, Kiss, really, you're Peter Chris. Why Peter Chris, brother? Well, so the, 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 the actual backstory was when I was five, my, my aunt down in Alabama had shipped me a Toys R Us drum set uh, up to Virginia. And so that was like, the best of all presents, right? Because up at that point, I just been beating on everything, the pots and pans story and everything else. So when I got this Toys R Us kit, <clears throat> I went through a couple of them, beat the crap out of them. And that was around, you know, the, well, 75, I was five. So 76, 77, 78, that's where me and the neighborhood friends really got in a kiss. And we did the gong show at the elementary school their version of the gong show because you know i'm sure robbie remembers the gong show so oh yeah yeah and actually the fun the ending of the story is even funnier you know uh you'll appreciate this drake so we did uh we all i was peter chris all the guys in the neighborhood with all the other members the the gene simmons had uh the blood capsules um you know all the we had dried uh, ice for the smoke we had uh uh whatever, black machines and everything else. Well, we ended up getting gonged. And you know who won the talent show? Was the Elvis impersonator. It came. Yeah. Oh, baby. So you, you fast forward years, years later, and it was always a story that Miss Mayo, the music teacher, is the one that gonged us. And fast forward to me now on the road with Brett, um, there was a friend of mine, friend of the band's, that worked with Miss Mayo, and I ended up talking to her on the phone, and she said she never, she wasn't the one that gonged us. So, you know, from elementary school all the way till now, and I'm, well, I'm 50, this was a couple of years ago, turns out she never gonged us, so, you know, it was a, uh, somebody lied, but. So yeah. she was not the reason. Yeah, everybody was always blaming on Miss Mayo for years, because, you know, the gong show, we by far had you know, as far as the outfits and the, the stage performance, we had all that down, you know, from the Kiss perspective. And, you know, of course, Elvis takes it easily. So, yeah. It was probably Elvis's dad kicking the gong from behind stage. Yeah. Well, back in, then, back in the day, the parents didn't like Kiss too much, you know, so. Right. The kids right. Did. So, wow. you know, brother, the fact that your grandmother gets you this Toys R Us kit at the age of five, Music had to have been a big influence coming up in your household. Were, were mom and dad into the music industry or were they singers? Or? Nobody was musicians. My dad was a music lover. Um, he loved everything uh, from Elvis to Dolly Parton to Waylon Jennings, uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival. Um, there was all that rolling through the house. So um, nobody actually played instruments. He had a guitar and he messed with it every once in a while. But, um, you know, I have two older sisters, but. No, there really wasn't anybody directly connected. Um, it was, you know, more or less the story of the Sandlot story of you with your buddies in your neighborhood. And all of us had just, and I was the youngest to start an instrument. And then my buddy, Jeff, who lived next door, same age, he ended up learning the guitar. And then my buddy, Bobby, learned the bass. And, and that was the band I was in until 
I was like 25. So from wow. four, yeah, 14 years old was the actual first band. I started at nine on a real kit. And then, you know, so, uh, but yeah, and they're still good friends to this day, which is great. Do they still play? Yeah, they do. They do. In fact, during this pandemic, I've been able to have the opportunity to go out there and uh, jam with them, um, which is great because, I mean, like your schedule, Robbie, uh, we're in and out every single weekend. So um, I've been with Brett for six years and I've got a five year old. So that tells you, you know, when I get home anytime from the road, I'm not really going out hanging out too much. I'm, you know, at home. Right. Uh, so, you know, although as bad as this, the pandemic is on all of us and our careers and what we do, it's been nice to jam with my buddies again. So um, that's been great. And you know, the feelings you jam with buddies from a long time ago. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a yeah. special energy that you get with each other. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys were together then. If you're saying, what, 11 years you played with these guys before, you know? Yeah. Saber. Wow. Saber. Um, it was so uh, the downside of it was right when I graduated high school we had hit our peak as far as the band. And um, that was when the eighties was over, you know, like early nineties. So right when I hit 1920, right at that prime age, like the band had its sound, we had its look, we had everything. And all of a sudden early nineties and it was gone or, you know, on its way. You know? Right. So, so, so you were playing um, through all those years Were you playing uh, parties, uh, were you playing at high school? Where were you guys playing at? I mean, uh, anywhere and everywhere I was yep. but you're right we were doing the uh the big parties out in the middle of nowhere um we were doing high school talent shows I went to a different high school than the rest of the other guys so we got to do two talent shows each year um which oh, was cool yeah which was kind of I'd go to theirs you know the other guys band school yep. and we'd switch and um but yeah that's it was we did a couple of couple of bars but uh as you know when you're underage and at that point it's hard to really get a lot of that stuff yeah. so it was a lot of parties uh, a lot of parties because i did the same thing i was just curious because um, we did a lot of house parties but i grew up in tucson so we did a lot of really big desert parties yeah right now where you're from then it's obviously there's area you guys went out and had parties like keggers and stuff out in the yep. middle of what, what was it like i mean what were what was what's it like there is like out in the forest i mean what is it <laughs> it's well it's not one of desert the, well one of the shows it was uh it was called summer fest 89 and and it was right around the time when i graduated and this guy with a ton of property out here and right outside manassas virginia it's in haymarket virginia is where it's at and there's a lot of space a lot of grass a lot of acreage you know it's not condensed like a lot of northern virginia is and uh this guy him and his family his father owned a ton of property he ended up getting the licenses he ended up getting all the materials wood materials we built an enormous stage uh, and it, it was there were like two thousand people there um and it was it was great it was at that point i mean i was 18 it was the biggest crowd i had ever played in front of but um it was an all-day thing all afternoon to the evening and and everything was great and um it was one of those just but everything was legal so a lot of them so that's were. weird so they actually got licenses to do this for that one yeah a lot wow. of them yeah a lot of them we had another one at haymarket on a bunch of property and i think every cop in prince william county came out um and they just you know just everybody went the other way you know i don't think that you know any of the things we ever did and we did a lot of them back in the day it was never anything that was illegal. <laughs> it was all just, you know, word of mouth. There's right. going to be this there. They'll build a stage or you played on the dirt or you played on the side of a hill. Yep. You know, you brought out generators, there's kegs and you, there's just thousands of people. I, I mentioned that one probably because it was the only real legit one because everyone was like yours. You just go out there and you do it and, you know, have a big bonfire party and everybody has fun. Yep. I don't know if it's my age, but I hope kids are still doing that, you know. Uh, I don't yeah, know. I don't think they are. I mean, I, you know, it could be just the age thing. You're right. It could be just like we just don't hear about it. They're not inviting us anymore. But I, mean, right. I, I just don't right. think it's really happening. I don't yeah. think it is. I don't see it. So, you know, I, I I would probably agree with that. Yeah. Which is pretty sad because it's special times, you know. Yeah. Those are yeah. definitely moments you remember forever. Yeah. You know, those those parties. Some, some of the moments you don't remember, but that's OK. You know. Right. 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 <laughs> but for the most part. <laughs> The general feeling, you know, of what's going on or was going on at the time was pretty impressive, pretty cool. Maybe so I you've been there. So have you've you've always lived there. Then you never moved away. 
Uh, yeah, I moved to Phoenix in 99. Really? I was, yeah, I was in Arizona uh, from 99 through 05. Um, oddly enough, an IT company had moved me out there. And I, be, I sold IT to the government. And they had started a government division. So um, I moved out to, to the Phoenix area. And that's ultimately where I met um, uh, Robert Mason. And oh, okay. Yeah, it was before he got the warrant gig. He had been he had already done lynch mob and he was doing a bunch of things in Arizona. And uh, there was a really cool 70s cover band that I played in called the Camaros. And uh, Robert was in a band called Metalhead. Yeah. And yep. Met Metalhead. <clears throat> oh, yeah. so our bass player, a girl named Jessica, phenomenal voice, great bass player, she violinist. She was dating the bass player for Robert's band. And so we used to do 70s and 80s uh gigs together in scottsdale oh. in and around scottsdale okay. so that's that was my first time ever kind of hanging out meeting robert and then you know the last six years with bnb with you and and with robert and joey and all the guys i spent a lot a lot of time with you cats on the road and yeah and, uh you know I, I was watching joey's uh interview with you guys and he's such a good dude love joe oh yeah totally yeah. yeah yeah i love joey you always have fun when you see him on the road Sometimes it's quick, you know how it is, but it's, yeah. you know, sometimes yeah. you get to spend more time. Sometimes you don't, it just depends. Yep. I but guess. yeah, that's interesting. I didn't know you were in Phoenix. Cause I mean, I used to play around that area a lot really? yeah, years ago, but I was gone. I moved to California in 93. So okay. I was gone at that point, but I imagine, you know, there are probably a lot of musicians that we know from the area possibly. Oh, sure. sure. Yeah. I would imagine. I, I, it was, um, I, when I moved back, I, I had left the Camaros, I think it was probably 2004 or whatever. And I had a, a second ankle surgery and on my right ankle. And so I had to take a break and really that's the only breaks I've ever had from being in a band from 14 until now I've had two ankle surgeries and, and, you know, that caused a little bit of a break, but other than that, it's always been in a band, just a part of something. So, uh, cool. yeah. And then I had the surgery in, uh, Arizona and the, the doctor was great. So, sir, I mean, as many miles I put on my ankle the last several years, it's doing great. So after two ankle surgeries, that was like my biggest concern was it falling apart, but it's been great. So how, how did you uh, deal with the summer heat? How do you like the summer heat there in Phoenix? Yeah. I mean, yeah. as long as you have air conditioning, like in your car and in your work and in your house, I mean, that's right. <laughs> that in the pool on um, that, it's pretty brutal, you know, um, you know, on the East Coast, you get around here in the D.C. area, you get all four seasons and and none, none of them are too extreme. Uh, the only thing is the humidity. And I mean, there's times I, I'd be in 117 in Arizona going, it's better than 90 in the humidity in Virginia, you know, yeah. but, you know, <laughs> it's it's brutal there. Like I was talking to my drum tech who lives in Phoenix, like three two weeks ago and he's like yeah it's still in triple digits i'm like what <laughs> who's your drum tech uh a cat named johnny mac johnny mac he was a striper and uh okay a couple other uh a couple other groups do you know kyle kelly he was uh he was another cat too that uh he's been around a bunch with a bunch of bands but good dudes yeah but johnny's in arizona okay yeah Drake's pretty familiar with the heat where he's at too. He's having to deal with the Texas heat, which is pretty, yeah, pretty brutal too. Mm -hmm. That's Texas, man. We get the heat and the humidity. So, yeah, yeah. ninety-five percent humidity out here. Jesus, which is brutal, brutal. And he, yeah. and he lives on a lake. You live I on have, a lake, so it adds I, a little extra. He lives on a lake. Yes, I've got uh, the boat dock and stuff out back there, and. I found out moving to Texas that I'm allergic to everything. everything. Like literally. I went in to do one of those skin tests, man. They did 40 different skin tests and they said you're allergic to 38 things in Texas. Lord. Right? So I don't know how long we're going to last <laughs> if these shots don't start working. You know what I mean? How long you been there? Uh, we've been here three years now. I just, I just found this out three weeks ago, though. So I spent three years miserable. Yeah, no kidding. Miserable. You know, just root brutal, but I love it here. I love West Texas. I love Texas. I love the attitude of Texas. And yeah, uh, I agree with that. I agree with that. Texas you know is uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then living on a lake doesn't suck, right? 
it does not suck having a boat dock and 150 feet of lakeshore on your backyard. Oh, that's nice. Right? So let's do some questions here from the audience. We've got some comments, Mike, we want to get to. Um, Cheryl Wright wants to tell you, thank you for giving me selfie lessons. And uh, Treasure Island in Minnesota on Valentine's Day was the last concert before the virus hit. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm the selfie guy uh, with the band. Are you the selfie king? Well, <clears throat> you know, what's funny is, is <laughs> so, you know, you go through the meet and greet line every night and everything, right? And right. You, you take a pictures with people and you, you, you see everybody doing this and reaching their hand out to take this picture. Right. And so if you have an iPhone on the left side of the phone, you have an up and down volume button. And that's how you take the selfie because you already have your hand on the phone anyway. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to put your finger up and do that. And a lot of people don't know that. You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed how many people do not know the up and down button on the phone, the volume buttons is how you take a selfie. It's not pushing the button on the screen. Hmm. And so every single night, literally every show, I'd shock someone. I'd be like, here, let me do it. <laughs> They'd be like, oh my God, but you just do. <laughs> I did not know that. There you I'm go. always trying to get my thumb in the best position to hit that bottom button. Oh man, because the way you hold your phone, your your fingers up on that top left anyway. Just push up or down, and it's going to take a picture. Yeah, I did not know that. Right on. Well, thanks for that, brother. My pleasure. Danny Trower, do you have any say on what poison songs are on the set when you're playing with Brett? Um, you know, it's something we goof around with. Um. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll do like cry tough during sound check, you know, and the bus is right on the stage or something. We know it here is it, you know, <laughs> and, um, but yeah, occasionally it happens, you know, it depends on the set, but for the most part, it's, you know, he, he, there's, there's, Brett is the master at work in every different type of crowd, you know, so um, he might pull out a sublime song or the Leonard Skinner song or whatever else, depending on the crowd, he might add in an extra poison song, but we kind of stay within the same, um, we we'll go, don't go too far out too much, um, unless there's a new single or, uh, whatever. But, um, I wish because, uh, there's a few of them of the poison songs that I, you know, I've always dug that I would love to do. Um, I won't forget you is a cool song. Um, yeah. you know, so but yeah, there's a bunch of them. So, oh, yeah. Brother. Thanks yeah. for the question. Robert Lawless. Oh, wants boy. To know if this, that, and the other are going to be doing any gigs this summer. Uh, you know what? I The gig with Pete and Eric, who Eric, our bass player, everybody knows Eric Brittingham from Cinderella, yeah. and then Pete, the lead guitar player. It, it all depends on the, 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 the traveling restrictions because we're in. Eric's in Nashville. We're here. And, um, you know, I, I think every, all three of the guys would love to do it, but there's nothing planned or discussed at the moment. Um, but I think we're all kind of waiting to see what happens, but, uh, I know Robert digs, uh, this, that, and the other. So that's great. That's cool, man. Yeah. Miss you, buddy. I hope you're well too. Absolutely. And then, uh, Don Wardell wants to know what's the weirdest show you've ever played? All right, so the the first one, wow, well, there could be a few of them, but the first one that comes to mind was in uh, your state, Drake. Oh, and I'm trying to remember the town, and it used to be a ghost town. There was nothing there. The, the town was wiped up, wiped out over the years. It was an old. Uh, I'm not sure it was gold mining town or something, but it became a ghost town. And then when Colorado legalized marijuana um this little ghost town dispensaries just started popping up in this little town and next thing you know it's starting to thrive and we went out there and it was like an episode of the twilight zone it was the weirdest thing every single person was super baked right <laughs> now what do we which is fine but you know i mean you got employees security you got everybody there and they're all stoned and <laughs> and then the next thing you know the it was lita ford and us and the promoter had no money and the show never happened and oh and, 
Yeah, it was. And we were stuck in this weird town. It was the strangest thing. Now, Robbie knows you never want that to happen. And we've been lucky, lucky that it, uh, the promoter situation, you know, has not happened very often. Um, but that was, that's why I mentioned the story because everything was bizarre. And then on top of it, we didn't even get to play the gig. And most of the time, if something weird happens throughout the day, the show usually goes on. Uh, but, but this night it didn't. And, you know, I, I even know that we even took the right route by saying it was um, issues with um, like the sound or something uh, like the, uh, is what was uh, told to the crowd and to not upset anybody. So and you didn't throw the promoter under the bus. No, we didn't even throw the promoter under the bus. Wow. Right. And that's what that's what I'm saying, because you do that. That's just a whole bad situation. So that wasn't even done. And we just announced it as something went wrong. I um, I was already back at the hotel in the parking lot with Marty, uh, the bass player for Lita. And we were both going, what is going on here? <laughs> and, you know, so. But yeah, there, were, there was a few weird ones, but that, that was one of them. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to share with you a memory that I have with you, Mike, that you may not be aware of. All right. I know Bobby's not aware of. Let me see if I can pull it up here without getting us into trouble with sound. All right. That's always that's always the issue with these guys. Yeah, they'll shut you so, right down. It's copyright, and you probably got to be careful with that. Right. So what had happened, Mike was, and let me find it here. All right, so this is going to take a second. But anyway, we were at a show, Mike, where it was in Midland. And Midland, Dan Texas. McNay, what's that? Midland, Texas. All right, go ahead. Midland, Texas. Dan McNay had forgot his equipment in the back of my ride up in Waco. And had begged me to come down to Midland. He's like, dude, you got to come down to Midland. Hey, drop the stuff off please dear god we're playing down here with brett michaels and the guys and i gotta have this stuff tonight so i made the drive from waco down to midland which is not a small speed you know it was what four four hours something like that go drive right and i get yeah. there right as dan and robbie and jack and everybody's getting off the stage and you guys are getting ready to come on and so we're standing side stage and i've got my little guy back there in a pair of headphones we're standing on the left side or something like that He's got his headphones on and he's beating on this banister. And I'm watching you and you're like literally performing and you look at your drum tech and you say, give the kid a set of sticks. So this is the little video of my kid getting the sticks from you. Check playing. It out. Let me see if it'll play here for you. All right. But if you can see him, there's yeah, my the drum stick. Back. Oh, okay, you, here we go. You keep staring <laughs> over at him like you're trying to Teach him how to hold that time. So you got Brett out there. Dude, that's time. great. So after the show, you came over, you gave him a good pat and all that stuff. But my son has been addicted to sticks and drums since that night. That's great. Dude, I, I, thank you for showing me that video, dude. That's amazing. That's, <laughs> that's amazing, for real. No, the problem. I was like, man, I, we got to have Mike on. I'm going to have to show That's, this video. Uh, the this only video I have of something like that is is um, with my daughter staged right at Graceland when we played. And, you know. <clears throat> you guys played at Graceland? I'm sorry? You guys played at Graceland? Dude, we were the very first artists to play. Uh, I don't know if it's like officially a Graceland, but we were the first artists that played a Graceland. Uh, the, they call it the Graceland Concert Series. And they built a complex on the other side of the street of Graceland. And it's a whole big like deal down there now. So they're running. I mean, obviously, you know, this pandemic's messed up everything, but they've been running this concert series for a while. Um, guy named Andy's uh, the promoter that handles that, but that was a huge deal. Like, um, my girl's parents came in, my mom came in, my sister came in and, and obviously my daughter and, uh, stepdaughter and, and, you know, it's our guitar player, Pete's a huge, his mom was an enormous Elvis fan. So 
there was a lot of um, emotional ties to that gig. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and it was the first gig, my sister, I, although I'd been in the band for a few years, it might, um, with, with Brett, it was the first gig my sister, one of my two sisters had seen me play. So there was a lot of different components to make it very emotional. Um, and then I ended up staying an extra day and they gave me a VIP to, tour and like all kinds of different stuff I would have never have known. Like there's a, there's a tree back by the pool in the back of the house um, when you walk past like where the gravesite areas are and there's a heart carved into the tree. Now I had a tour guide with me I don't know how many they tell the people that go through there, but apparently the rumor is Michael Jackson had carved this little heart on this tree when he was uh, married or dating Lisa Marie or something. I thought that was kind of neat, but uh, wow, yeah, it's kind of cool, right? That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, cool. A lot of different factoids, but uh, yeah, the Graceland gig was really cool. Um, wow. But yeah, man, I appreciate you showing that uh, you know, your son, man, that's, yeah, see, there's the ring. I had to put on the glove. That was in like a separate back room. That's not part of the normal tour. Um, You're that, wearing Elvis's ring, brother. I'm sorry? You're wearing Elvis's ring. You know what's crazy is that ring he had on in his in his casket when he died. Um, that's what's crazy. My hand was shaking for real. Oh, um, yeah, crazy. yeah, he had it on in his casket, and they, they ended up taking it off before they buried him. And... Uh, yeah, my hand was doing this when I even I had the glove. On, I was like, "Oh my god, the king wore this. It's crazy." <laughs> wow. oh. yeah. I'm gonna end it right there, bro. Just I'm gonna stay right here. Just put me in a corner. <laughs> it doesn't get any better. Hey, man. So, hey, thank you for showing me that video, of your son. Like, I, honestly, I mentioned my daughter and stuff, but like, there's a moment that, like, yeah, I, I think every any any every musician always says, you know, you want your child to you know, see something big and, and, you know, or, and I know I always take the time out. I know all the guys in Jack's band always take the time out to, you know, thank the fans or the younger generations. And, and, and I think all of us remember too, when we were that age, that little tiny thing made a world of difference to us. And I had moments like that myself. And so if you can pass that on to somebody else, I, I think it's a beautiful thing, you know, absolutely. You know, earlier in that same video, it was kind of surreal as I'm standing next to Jack and Robbie. Right. And of course, Brett's out on stage and he's doing every rose has a thorn and it has its thorn. And Jack is standing there lip syncing with Brett. And Robbie's kind of got his hands like he's doing, you know, but he's just kind of doing it like not even consciously. Yep. And my little guy's sitting there beating with sticks. And I'm thinking, and this is like a very surreal moment. You know what I mean? Like, Right. To see Jack from Great White, you know, one of the biggest in, in the 80s and 90s with Brett standing out there from Poison and Brett Michaels Band and them two. It was just it was a very surreal moment. Very surreal. I, that, in fact, I think it was that night um, before we went in Every Rose. At, uh, before, before Every Rose is always uh, my drum solo and then the intro, the other guys. And I had, I, I tried looking for the picture to send it to you, but right when I was done, because during the entire show, I can, I don't leave my riser. And the only time I have is right before every rose, because he, he's talking and he's doing his thing. Sometimes I'll get down right off the riser. That's the only spot. And Jack had walked behind my drum riser during my drum solo. And so I got off the back of it and I walked up and we just gave each other like the biggest, like brotherly hug. And Dickie, uh, Robbie's drummer, Jack's drummer, took a picture of it and, and ended up sending it to me. And I was a huge fan of, of Ray White back in the day, of, of Jack and Jack's voice. And, you know, so it, those little things are huge to me. Even, does, you know, I mean, you could do this gig for 10, 15 years and Robbie will tell you, you'll have special moments every night. And so, yeah. Well, that night, uh, we all came out and sang on the closer on uh, the Kiss tune, the rock and roll all night. We're all out on stage singing along with you guys. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in, fact, cool. in fact, Dan, I wish Dan was tuning in. Dan had walked up behind my microphone. Off, you remember that. He was grabbing it, like singing it. You know, I mean, he was going for it. And so, uh, oh, yeah, Dan was going for it. <laughs> <laughs> 
very surreal moment for me and my kid, man. And Brett, you know, I've met him a few times. I've put him on the stage a couple of times. In fact, we did a show together up in uh, Scott's Bluff, Nebraska, you and I and Brett. And yep. I don't know, Robbie, were you on that one or was that? No, no. That was Warrant and Firehouse with us up there that time. And okay. Just does an amazing, amazing show. Amazing show. And Mike, your yeah. energy behind the kit is unparalleled, man. You, I'm, I'm shocked because it's like just flawless. And, and I know how hard that is, brother, but just flawless. Flawless. I appreciate it. Thank you. You were talking about your daughter at that point, and I cut you off about Graceland. I, I mean, did would you you were going to say something about was there a video or something from that night with her, or was it just just bringing her the experience? Is that what you were going out with that? Uh, there is actually video. There, oh, there, okay. There's a video. She's actually sitting on uh, one of the um, flight cases. She's got the airplane headphones things on, you know. So, um, and she's got this pink, like heavy metal leather jacket on and she's got her pink cans on she's got a set of my sticks and, and you know <clears throat> to everybody else like when it's not your kid it's those things is really nothing but like I don't know you know you're at Graceland your daughter's there she's you have video of her just and I was playing and you can see me in the video playing you see her just trying to play along and uh things like that so and yeah, she's cool. not she hasn't been able to attend a lot of shows over the last five years so um there's only been a few um, now your last show was February 14th was the last show you did this year uh the 22nd February oh, 22nd, 22nd in Vegas yeah we played okay. Fremont Street um oh and you know what's crazy man is is I you know there wasn't any word on the street that I was aware of about the pandemic or anything like that at that time I mean we know now that it, you know that was back in January so um I, it's crazy to think I would have never thought that gig in February was our last show. <laughs> oh, I know we did ours was February 14th and we were mm -hmm. like, okay, we had a little bit of a lull, but we were getting ready to go out. And then all of a sudden everything was getting canceled. And I know you mm -hmm. guys were um, supposed to go on the monsters of rock cruise, right? It was, it wasn't the, we oh, actually, no, the 80s cruise, right? We flew home from Vegas and that's, we had, uh, I think, the following weekend off, and then that, that next week, we were supposed to fly um, and go on to that cruise, the 80s cruise, and that's where it, uh, Brett's doctor mentioned, you know, you're a diabetic, you cannot do yeah, this. No. Yeah, and, and we had actually, he had tried to alter, uh, to make things easier to, to try, I mean, you always want to try to make something work. So we even, we were going to do two shows on the back end of the cruise, of the seven-day cruise, so instead of going out of Miami, we were going to fly into St. Thomas and the Virgin Islands and just board right there at that port on day three or four and then do two shows. And that'd be the end of the cruise. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, and it was the right call to cancel it. So. Yeah, that's I was talking with John Domigal yeah, from Arm. Right. And he was telling me yeah. about it at that time going, yeah, Brett's not doing it. I was like, OK, this is getting serious here. You were you're <laughs> starting to see the cancellations come in and it was happening for everybody. Yep. But it was yep. right at that time, it just all of a sudden, boom. Now you look back and go, well, we've all been sitting for how long now? I mean. Yeah, a long time. Um, it's, oh, yeah. What, eight months? Eight months, I, yeah. I, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, I hope everybody is okay out there. There's been a lot of mental stress and, you know, and, and I've actually, I lost a friend uh, he's a drummer, local guy. Um, can you still hear me okay? Oh, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. All right. And, you know, it's it's not only the, the financial and the job and everything else, but it's also a massive change to what everybody does in their life every day, you know, in their lives every day. So, um, you know, I hope everybody's doing okay. Um, yeah. I mean, great at the moment. I've had my I've had my moments where it's like, ah, I need to get out of this house and, you know. I, I, I've gotten that way a few times too, where I'm just like, man, I, I've been here for, you know, three weeks, I haven't left the house and I just got to do something. I would get on my bike and I would go ride, you know, there's right, a bike right. path and I'll go, okay, at least I got out of the house, you know? Yep. And I'm I imagine for some, some people it's got to be worse. I mean, I do have my studio and the family gets along well. So there is that, which is a, a plus, but I can imagine if people aren't getting along, yeah, well, if there's yeah. too many people in a small and close place or whatever the case may be, 
I can see how it can be really difficult with people probably with alcohol and drugs and there's you're hearing about suicide and people aren't going in and getting tested for cancer and, and all these things are going on. No. That's why I brought it up. You get it too, man. And so, you know, just, I, it's, hopefully everybody be on the same page. We get through this. And I know you've mentioned that in the past, Drake, about everybody just being on the same page. And, and, you know, I look at it like our careers are, are put on hold until everybody else can go. Let's, let's, let's get this thing down. Let's work together so we can kind of get some normalcy, but it's going to go through a hard time first before you get to that. So, yeah. um, but is there anything on your schedule as of now, or is it completely wiped clean? It's clean. Uh, we did a we did a virtual gig not too long ago. Brett flew in here to Virginia, and we it was a, a corporate gig for uh, it was like an insurance company. I think it's like two or three hundred employees, and and we did an acoustic show. So I played the cajon, and and. Um, it went great. Everything went great with it. It was an hour set and uh, we do a song and somebody would pop in like the president or the vice president or somebody high up within the company or whatever else. And apparently all 200 employees were all on Zoom and Jeffrey Ross, the comedian, he was like the MC before we went on. And oh, wow. um, so it was a different thing, you know, because um, Brett's so animated, so interactive with everybody and touch and feel with everything. So um, but it worked out great. But that's really the only thing we've uh, done so far like during this break so virtual yep wow <laughs> yep. yeah we got a couple more questions from the audience here brother all right um this one's coming in from brenda she says obviously you're an amazing drummer yourself but her question is is who has really impressed you who do you who do you look up to you you know it's interesting is is um with instagram and social media you see a lot of well, if we know on social media, if you go on Instagram, <clears throat> caters to you and me. And, you know, so I get a lot of drummer videos. Um, you know, obviously I'm, I follow Pearl, I follow, I follow Vader and Aquarian, uh, my endorsements. But, man, I, you know, I couldn't tell you any names, but there's some people like the, the, the younger generation <clears throat> you see, and they're just super fast and just really, really, really good. Um, I, you know, my I go from like Buddy Rich and Sandy Nelson um, I still have the records. That's old school. Uh, I was always a big Neil Peart fan, but Rush fan, but that was never my style. You know what right. I mean? <clears throat> it was always more than I thought I would ever want to take on. Um, but the, the sound of Rush wasn't, you know, just like Dream Theater. Mad respect, love it. Just not my thing uh, in terms of playing. Um, but I, you know, like Tico Torres, I've always said, he's just... Um, just a solid drummer. Um, and that's the drummer I would always want to be, you know, is, is someone that's solid, not an over player. And, you know, my DNA doesn't really dictate trying to be the guy, you know, to get all kinds of, you know what I mean? Just attention and everything. I just, I, I just, I literally love to beat the shit out of my drums and, but play them really, really good. If I, you know, um, in terms of my meter, not a lot of overplaying. Uh, sometimes I feel like a a little too much into it but whatever you know um speaking of your style and drums brother let's talk about cu custom drum decor for a little bit yeah so you you've got an amazing company that you're part of let's tell the people a little bit about that and i'll try to share some photos of that if i can here all right all right so i've checked it out i've went on it's www.customdrumdecor.com yes sir and Mike's got some amazing, amazing stuff that he's working with here. Um, go ahead and tell them a little bit about it while I pull it up here for him. The, uh, you know, the idea, actually, I didn't really take the business too, too seriously until this pandemic. Uh, a few years ago, my mom, she had re retired from the Fairfax County Courthouse, and she was doing volunteer work at a thrift shop. And she called me and she said, hey, somebody just donated a drum set. And I said, get it. And she, and I, she didn't tell me about the kid or anything. I just said, get it. And she goes, well, don't, don't you want to? I said, no, I don't want to know. Just buy the drum set. And it was only like $20. So the kid didn't have a, um, a kick drum with it. It had two tom-toms, a floor tom, and a snare drum. So I couldn't really, and I really wasn't trying to do anything. Like, I didn't know anything about it. So once I got it, I'm like, I was on Pinterest 
I think uh, not too long before that. And I'd seen some like home decor made out of drums. And so I ended up making a couple of projects just for my own man cave. Um, it wasn't for any other reason. And then uh, over the last couple of years, I've made a few for like breast cancer can stick it, a few charity events. If I could do something that'll help sell the product so it makes money for, uh, for the fundraiser or whatever. And, you know, once this pandemic kicked in, I'm, you know, and I've got a five-year-old that I've got to do virtual co-teaching with Monday through Friday. So I really don't have the ability to go out and go like drive for Amazon or do something else. I have to be here at home. So I, you know, I spend most of my evening hours uh, just here in the man cave and, and I get these little, I get those spacer pieces of wood and I make the clocks, I get floor toms, I put lights in them, I make end tables. The whole point is to try to make something classy, something nice. And, uh, you know, we can add all the vinyls, you know, to the top of it, or like you're showing the, the lamps right there, the 45s. Um, okay. But, you know, I tell you what, um, I'm on Etsy and, and it's going really, really good because you, you expect to drive a lot of sales, you know, through the the band and every all the people that you know and your social media network and that sort of thing but i've been happily surprised we get a lot of etsy orders the last few weeks just i got i just shipped something out to the united kingdom um in fact uh, it was a um uh the snare drum clock <clears throat> it was an actual snare drum it was a nice ludwig uh, maple piccolo snare drum really yeah. nice snare drum and yeah, so, but on Etsy, it, it, I've been getting sales from just people that like the product, which is great. That's a good sign. So cool. I'm loving it, dude. I mean, I seriously, I sat through your website the other night with the wife. I'm like, I want one of these. I want one of these. This would look good in Jack FM studio. This would look great behind me in this one. <laughs> right. So yeah, I agree. I'm going to be placing a lot of orders. Good, good. Customize <laughs> and say to my friend, Matt, right? I got you. All right, brother. All right. So let's talk about, you, you brought up the uh, tick cancer that you're part of. And, and obviously this is a something very, very close to my heart. Um, lost several family members to cancer. Let's talk a little bit about the, the cancer that you're involved with, the, the website. Sure. Absolutely. So it's, uh, it's breast cancer can stick it. Can stick and it. Breast cancer can stick it. And it's, it's run by, it's headed by April Samuels, who is amazing. There she is, uh, amazing drummer <clears throat> out of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And she's had um, a double mastectomy. She's been through, uh, you have to read her story. I mean, God bless her, what she's been through. And to turn all of what she's been through around, uh, to build what she's building. And it's the amount of people and the amount of support on a, on a high level that are coming in to help her. I mean, these are big name artists. These are like Rich Redmond from Jason Aldean. You know, there's a lot of big name drummers that, that all come in. And of course I was, anytime I'm in the, the last couple of years, I've been in the Dallas Fort Worth area. I'm more than happy to put on the breast cancer can stick a shirt. I play with my pink drumsticks and you own it, you know, and, and you, you support something and, and April's amazing. I don't know if it's still on the shelves, but it was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Lay's Potato Chips, they have a like a campaign going on for very special um, people that do huge things. And she's on the bag. Of, it's called Hot Sauce. It's, the flavor is Hot Sauce. And you can, on the back of the bag, you see a picture of April and her story. Uh, but it's the, every, the first uh, Sunday in October every year. Now, it just passed uh, this you know, earlier in the month and it had to go virtual. But... Uh, uh, the, the drum from corn. I mean, you name it, like be, these people are just throwing, doing anything they can to donate and to raise as much money. As, and I think they raised about 60, 50, 60 grand this year. Uh, but it's just a thing that's building. So I, I'm more than happy to be a part of it next year. In fact, the year, but not this October, last October, I was, I, I was, we were doing a corporate event I'm trying to remember where, I think in California, and it was a Saturday night and everybody else was flying home the next day. I went straight to the airport. I flew out, did a red eye, went, flew into um, <clears throat> Dallas and they had somebody to pick me up um, and they just, they take care of all the drummers that are part of this thing. And then they bring in 
uh, like local regional drummers to, to perform, to raise money. Uh, but they've got an amazing team. So it's something I'm super proud of being a part of and, and I'm grateful to be a part of it. So um, kudos to April for what she's doing. It's an incredible organization and, and it's such a deserving um, group of women. I mean, mm -hmm. the, brave, the, the amount of bravery that it takes to, as a female, to have those surgeries done, the mastectomy, double mastectomy, things like that, to go out and put on a brave face and still feel womanly and they're still feeling I, man my salute them i salute them because that, right. that's incredible it is i mean it's one thing to get through it and and then put on a smiling face that, for everything you've been through but for her to just like super come up and really just kind of grab it and take you know control of it and and build something like this i you know i hope the best for their you know foundation and i'll be a part of it as long as i can be so I'd love to be a part of it as any way we can too with radio or our show or whatever. Cause that's Absolutely. A, we're bringing you to Dallas. As long as you come to Dallas, we're bringing you in. I'm going to do it, brother. I'll come see you in Dallas. It's only awesome. a four hour trip from here. Awesome. Absolutely. Very cool. Absolutely. Robbie, you going to come out? Of course I will. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That's gonna, hey, a drum a will make a guitar player's head explode. Probably. <laughs> I'll have my earplugs in. I'll be like, there we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> or I could pretend I can drum. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. A little bit. Muy poquito. <laughs> I'll just sit behind a set. Right. <laughs> That's great. I'll let That's you play. You be the man behind the curtain, Mike, and I'll I'll be out there just. Yeah, man, like I got your back. I got your right. back. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Actually, you know, I'll tell you, I gotta tell you a quick story. Sure. So, so between Christmas and New Year's uh, this past December, we were uh, had a few gigs up in New York and uh, Brian Quinn, Q from the uh, Practical Jokers. Practical Jokers. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And Practical Jokers. Absolutely. So he, he's, a, he's a huge boys and fan, big Brett fan. So anytime we're in that Jersey uh, region, he'll always come out. And <laughs> so him and his, him and his uh, fiance or wife came out and they're super, always super, super nice. So he was so fired up after the show. We were playing in New York the next night. And he was like, I'm going to come tomorrow night. And then he said he had a buddy coming in from his wife reminded him. He had a buddy coming in from L.A. So he's going to try to get him. And then one of the guys, Sal, on the show. And so I pitched to Q that night if they were going to come the next night because they're always playing pranks on each other. So I'm like, let's get Sal up like on stage just to announce. But then let's say that he's going to do a drum solo and he doesn't even know it and sucker him into going up. I mean, that could be, you know, if you don't have a play drums <laughs> and you're front of the crowd, that'd be kind of terrifying. I would think so. Yeah. You know, he couldn't make it the next night. You know, his buddy from LA came in. So, which I totally understand, but uh, you know, we'll get, we'll get you on stage, play some drums. <laughs> that would have been fantastic. Brother. I actually love that show. We watch it religiously. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good, he's a good dude. Is he? That's good, man. Yeah. That's good. I would have liked to have seen Sal get embarrassed, though. Yeah, well, that was the whole plan. He, you know, everybody had a couple of drinks after the show, so we were laughing, having a. We had devised this whole plan for the next night, and yeah. Oh, well. So, go. I'm going to ask you one of those questions from our audience that Robbie and I always cringe over when they ask. All right, ready, Robbie? Get your cringe face on. All right, Amanda Albanathy. Would like to know, while touring with the Brett Michaels band, who was the most memorable band you have toured with? Um, um, okay, so like Robbie's schedule, you know, each weekend, we, you know, we're always um, with different bands. Yep. You know, so it, it, there, it, my, at least my six years, there hasn't been any lengthy tours with just one solid band instead of a whole bunch of gigs, you know, with, uh, with Robbie's band and, you know, and uh, Warren, and those guys. Um, I can tell you, though, uh, if you don't mind me telling you a funny story about. No, please. Something I'll, I'll, well, OK, two two quick stories. All right. Okay. So our, our keyboard player, Robbie, right? he's the uh, he's the uplifting never down, always happy, good dude. You know what I mean? So we're, we're in the dressing room. We're doing a, like an arena show. And it was with all the bands, right? And uh, Lita and I'm not sure if Jack was on the bill, but Mort was on the bill and they had the dressing room right next to us. And the dressing room 
walls were just cur black curtains, you know? So, <laughs> so stupid. So Robbie opens up the curtain, like we're in our dressing room. He opens up, he looks through and he puts his head through and he goes, so this is where the down boys go, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. All of a sudden, everybody, all the guys from Warren literally turn around like, you have to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, that's the dumbest thing, right? All right, so next thing, this was just uh, like October of last year. We were on a, we, this was a, a short tour with Lita Ford and Night Ranger, and it was the Hometown Heroes Tour. It was like seven, eight, nine gigs. And this was probably the third or fourth show and we went on, we were the headliner, but we went on right after Night Ranger. And Robbie and I, again, our, key, our keyboard player, um, we're standing outside the door of our dressing room. And you have the long, you know, hallway back in, you know, this arena. And all the Night Ranger guys are walking towards us. Jack Blades and, you know, all the, you know, and I was a huge Night Ranger fan. So it was, it was a, you know, amazing to be on, you know, this whole thing with them. They start walking by and Robbie goes, can you guys suck just once? <laughs> because Night Ranger always sounds so good. Oh, they're killer. They're so good live. They're, they're so good. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not even joking. And, and, and if you, in the future, if anybody have a chance to go see them, just such great Highly musicians. Highly recommended. Right? Yeah. Across the board, they have fun. They sound amazing. They're all unbelievably talented. The and show is just so good so and good. and you and you get it too when you have a you know an opening artist and and they're just tearing the place down you're going right. good lord and so what robbie said was was actually funny because he was like man can you guys suck just one night please good lord <laughs> and you know and and it actually was funny because eric and i were in the dressing room before they went on and they do this whole five-part harmony vocal warm-up Right. And it was amazing. And so we told Carrie Kelly, who's their guitar player, joking with them. We were like, Eric's like, remind me to never like warm up next to your dressing room. Right. Because they sound so good. Well, the next show, uh, Jack Blades and, and um, Brad Gillis came into our dressing room and, you know, said, all right, guys, we're here to you know, listen to your pre-show vocal warm up, and Eric's like, "Man, you fuck, I ain't doing that shit around you guys," you know, because they, they they're just pros, pros. Right. Oh yeah. Does you it know? push you harder coming in after an act like that to be more precise to deliver more? I mean, is it a oh, driving yeah. force for you? Yeah, yeah. I, I and it's a good thing. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? It's a good thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We played a handful of shows with Night Ranger, and I always stick around and watch them. I stick around and watch you guys, and we play with you too, of course. Yep. But yep. Uh, I mean, they were just so good, and it's just like, okay, you know, I try and drag the guys out. Come on, it's it's uh, it's school time. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. It's time to go and learn. This, yeah. You know, go watch how how the big boys are doing it. <laughs> but it, it's 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 not a bad thing because you may get no. hit. Yeah, it's just like you know, Robbie, when you and I were in the crowd way years ago. And you're going, you're blown away by somebody, but and it almost hit you like, I suck. Like I'm not that good, but that should motivate you, not get you down. Right. You know what I mean? At least you know some people handle certain ways. I've always been like, hey, let's put more. Yeah, how do, how do we get from here to here? You know, it's so okay. Right. You kind of study what people are doing. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So now this makes me curious though. How how did you hook up with Brett? How did that connection happen? So the guitar player in the band, Pete, him and I went to high school together. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And he was, um, uh, he was in ninth grade. I was in 10th grade. So I was a year ahead of him. And we played in different bands in high school and uh, competitive. Him and I weren't real friendly with each other on a musical level. Yeah, you know, but you you get it, you know, you get oh totally. It's it's the rivalry thing, the rivalry band. Thing. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. So it wasn't until like, you know, my, my and I I did some fill in gigs with him, but I did my own band. He did his band and and everything else. And then in my mid twenties, he had been in a band uh, for a few years. I had an interest in a a minor label in New York, 
and they went up and they they had tracked uh, some demo tracks, and the engineers had recommended just getting another drummer, and that's where I got a phone call. So I, I learned the songs and went up to and I jammed with the guys, and we all gelled. It was a real cool jam with the guys, and went up to New York and I auditioned in front of the producer, um, who was his name's Richard Goderer. He wrote "I Want Candy." Um, okay. All right. He wrote, he co-wrote a lot of the Go-Go's, uh, uh, George Thorogood, a bunch of different bands, uh, more uh, 70s, late 70s cat. Um, and he was the co-owner of this minor label in New York. And everything went through with Flying Colors. And I got in the band and Pete and I signed a, like a minor deal. We released a record that went in Virgin Records and Best Buy and Tower Records before they all, you know, went south. And we got an RV and this was um, like... 96 97 through 99 it was right before i moved to arizona because after i left the band i moved to arizona and uh we got in an rv and and traveled the country and and did what you're supposed to do and climbing that ladder of the music business you know what i mean you got to struggle and go through it and and we had a great time and and it was a really really good band called some odd reason you can go on amazon or apple you know apple music and uh, some odd reason just like it's spelled it was a kind of a 90s, 90s um, Goo Goo Dolls kind of rock pop band. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, I, you know, I moved to Arizona in 99 and then Pete had uh, basically formed this other band. And, and you know, he, this band opened up for the very first version of the Brett Michaels band, oh. like, like 18, 19 years ago. Wow. And somehow him and Brett hit it off. And, and so Pete became the guitar player of, Brett's, you know, solo band. And that's their story ever since for almost 20 years now. And I met Brett way back in like probably 2007, 2008. And, you know, it was like, a, you know, to me, it just, I mean, it was a very easy situation to hang out with him. I, you know, wasn't like, oh, you felt like he was super rock star Brett Michaels, but it was a really easy thing with him and I to, you know, kind of converse and just and, everything. and just a really nice guy to get along with and and when they lost their drummer a couple of years later well in 2014 i'd already been asked prior to that whenever his guy because he had the same guy uh, a friend of mine actually chucky from this area and whenever chucky was going to leave i'd take over and you know so that was a couple of years before it happened and he just he I, brett was more about um he trusted in Pete that I could play the drums and stuff. And we jammed before I actually started with the band, but just off the top, um, he liked my attitude. And I think that's what you want to have someone that, you know, you can get along with as long as you do your instrument and you do your job, as long as your personalities kind of can coexist together, you know? Yep. That is, everybody talks about that. It's the huge part of it because there's so many people come in with such bad attitudes and they don't, nobody wants, who wants to play with that? Nope. Who wants to be on the road with a guy that's a tool all the time? Not me. No, Exactly. It's yep. like you're going to be out. You want to have guys you're friends with. You can got talk back, with man. what got your back the whole bit. Yep. 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 Super important. Everybody talks about it. Everybody knows it. Yet you still see the guys that are out there that are like, okay, that one won't last too long because you know it. it. Right. Yeah. You can see it. And I, I um, Robbie, I've known our keyboard player. I've known <clears throat> from Virginia days. I've known him for 20 years. Uh, Pete, since I was 15, 16 years old. Um, our old bass player, you know, I had known all since high school. Uh, obviously, we have had Eric in the band for, I think, five years now or whatever. Yeah, how did that switch happen? I mean, he's, Eric is a great performer. I mean, when I saw him with you guys, I was like, whoa, okay. Yeah. It seemed like it kind of maybe stepped the game up a little bit. I mean, I, you know, just yeah, yeah, opinion, yeah. But, you know, yeah. it was definitely a lot of fun to watch him and Pete together. You know, they, they definitely got a polished thing happening. Yeah, it's, I, I could tell you that, like, I was a big Cinderella fan back in the day. And when, when I'd found out, like, after our, our bass player Bart had left that, and, and I know uh, Eric had filled in for Bobby Dahl on, on, like, a Poison tour or whatever at some point. So he was, him and Brett were real cool. But for me, like, it, I had to pick Eric, when Eric was going to fly in, to Dulles because Pete lives in this area too. And I was going to go pick up Eric at the airport. And then we were going to go to this rehearsal facility and jam and um, get some stuff down. 
And then I think Eric was starting the following week or whatever. And I can tell you this, no joke, like we ended up like before we went over all the, the B&B stuff, the poison songs and the other stuff that we had to get down, we went over a couple of Cinderella songs. Oh, and, really? Yeah. Cool. And man, like, like there, there's this, I want, um, I'm trying to think of the name of the song, but Eric sings the high part of the harmony in the second part of the verse. Save me somebody. Save, save me. me. Yeah. yeah. Right. That second part, uh, the, uh, the, the second part of the verse, he sings that high harmony in there and on the record. And when we were in this little room, just the three of us, and we were doing, and we were playing it and Eric got on that microphone and hit it. Now he can sing really high. And I swear to God, all my hair stood up on my arms. It was, I had that moment. I was like, holy crap. It was amazing. You know, so, you know, I'm reminded every night, like I look you know, directly in front of me and you have Brett Michaels and you got Eric Brittingham and, and I'm blessed and grateful for the opportunity. You know, I worked real hard. So I, I find that as an element of, you know, I, I've earned that, but at the same time, you know, you know, there's too, Robbie, that, that timing and, networking and friendships and <clears throat> all that stuff comes to has to come together the right way and it did sure. it, it, and i'm i you know i'm grateful for that so and yeah it's it's tricky and you know most of the time it does happen by um relationships right almost always i mean my first national gig did not happen that way which is pretty surprising right that it, it happened from a demo tape but that's rare that it happens that way Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it, it's just normally it's like me meeting with Jack was uh, because of the a drummer that I played with him, uh, Derek Pontier, who had introduced myself and Dario, and then mm -hmm. we just all kind of fell together. Or when I worked with Eddie Money, it was through a, uh, a producer I was working with and just different guys. I worked with Spencer Davis, by the way, Spencer Davis passed away like a week ago, which was oh, I'm sorry. Uh, kind of sad to hear that. Um, and Eddie as well. Uh, we Eddie, did, yeah, that was we did that a show with Eddie Money in Texas, and I had yeah. a chance to meet him. <clears throat> and what a good dude! I, his son was real cool. His son was the, the drummer of the band, and um, a really nice guy, a legend. And absolutely, he was just yeah. I really that one kind of hit me kind of hard because he just he was such a nice guy. You know, he was he was uh, he was just very good to me, very you know good to me. So I thought, wow, this is you know. It, it stands out, you know what I mean? Oh, I think we're having some problems. Uh-oh, we're not hearing you. No. <laughs> no volume. Oh, no. You can hear us, right? Can you hear us? You can't hear us. Okay, he can hear us, we just can't hear him. I wonder if his microphone got muted or something. I wonder. Yeah, it doesn't show on this end as it was. Huh. Everything shows solid on this end, unless it's just a, a network issue, issue, a connectivity issue. Hmm. Let me see here. Let me ask him to unmute it. Hit your microphone button, Mike, on the uh, lower left-hand corner of your screen. <laughs> we all do it, brother. Don't feel bad. Yeah, that's why I'm squinting all the time. And people are like, hey, you stoned? No, I'm not stoned. I'm squinting because I need my glasses on. <laughs> Oh, darn it. I don't know what's going on. Let's do this. Mike, let's do this. I'm going to take you out and then come back in. Okay. All right, brother. So you'll have to click on the, uh, the, the deal once again. All right. Let's put them out there. All right. Dude, this guy is so cool, man. Yeah. He's uh, the first time I met him, he was that way. Um, you know, we got along right away, which is really cool. I mean, it was, he was just really friendly and like, hey, you know, and not all guys are that way. Some guys are just kind of more, they're back off and maybe they're cool, but it takes a while to get to know them. He was right off the bat when I first met him, just like talking and we just hit it off. Yeah, so I got out the other day. I hadn't talked to him, um, you know, since I've seen him in person, but he had called me and what turned in from a 10 minute conversation went into a two hour conversation. We're just like, can you hear us now, my brother? It looks like you're connecting to audio. All right. Can you hear me? There we go. There yeah. You are. Yeah. Yep. 
You're back. Yeah, Bob just had to get out and come back in because I didn't touch anything. It just, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's good. I had issues with mine a little while ago too. I think the networks are kind of screwy right now, but you've got so much going on with the election and things that are going on. It's just bogging down every stream source there is, man. Yeah, that mm -hmm. makes sense. So we've actually been pretty fortunate this evening, especially here in small town San Angelo, where we're already choked down on our signal and then our system runs on a loop. So if one section goes down, the entire city goes without, you know? So, good lord. Right? right. So that's pretty crazy. So you were talking before that it's pretty surreal because I'm looking at your lineup here of the people who influenced you in a, in a past video or a past uh, interview you did. Mm -hmm. um, Poison was on the list, obviously. Bon Jovi, Tesla, Rap, Motley Crue, Tommy Lee was an influence. Yep. But uh, it's, it's got to be, you got to catch yourself once in a while. And I do it too when I'm you know, looking through my friends list or talking to people or whatever. I'm like, wow, I used to really just kind of get lost in this guy's music back in the day. And here I am, as far as you are playing with him on the stage, it's got to be pretty, pretty yeah. intense. Yeah. 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 It's, there's been some neat moments on the road. Um, I think you said it pretty well though. It's kind of like, uh, how did you put it? That it's, you kind of like what Matt says, you're lost in it, but also you go, I did work hard to get here. So right. there is kind of the, the both sides of that where you're kind of going, wow. And the other right. side going, well, I did work hard to get here. So, you know, right. you want right. to be able to enjoy and go, okay, I, I must deserve being here because, well, right. I am here and I did work hard to get here. But at the same time, you're going, wow, look at look at the friends I got. And, you know, right. the people right. you know and you jammed with and whatnot, you know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's um, yeah, you don't, you always want to give yourself credit if you're doing the work, you know, and, and like, I never left it after high school and, and, and ran off, got married, started a family and I was out of music for 10, 15 years. And all of a sudden I got that fire back. You know, I, I'd never stopped playing, never. Like, and I didn't have my first child until five years ago. So music was always my first choice and everything, you know, now do I have a certain regret regrets? I think in life, as you get older, you look at anything, you go, Oh man, I wish I would have gone away, you know, just away to college and like really had that full experience instead of doing it locally or, or whatever. Um, but, you know, we choose to go down a, a paved road. If we want to have all the securities in life, or we can go down the gravel road, for something you truly love and you truly believe in and you don't really know what's at the end of it, but what do you do? You know what I mean? So everybody's got to make that choice. And I always made the choice of just playing music and it's just, you know, um, so when people say, Oh, why do you have that job? And I don't, it's, I mean, again, it's back that I always played and I always networked and I always worked, tried to work well with others. And that's a main thing is, is being able to like, and I've told, you know, Brett, many times I'll protect this house. That's how I feel. If I'm involved with something, I'll protect the house. And, you know, I, all of us can individually have to, but <clears throat> I take, you know, what I do very seriously. And, 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 you know, and so, I mean, you get all that to all those components, Robbie. Yeah, totally. I'm the same way. I've always done music, always have done music, Didn't, yep. you know, had a child about the same time you basically and you know same same kind of thing and just worked at it and worked at it and went through some you know low points or i don't know if they're low points but i mean it's difficult times uh, yeah you know you're struggling and, and wondering why you're you, you know what's going to happen and where am i going with this and what am i going to do and you know you just keep doing it and keep believing in what you're doing and then the door opens up you know so it's, i can it's say really like funny. leading up to the brett gig i literally did everything that you do to, to go up the, the the ladder, so to speak, of the music business. It wasn't like uh, big, huge things happened when I was 21 years old, you know? I mean, so everything from playing in the garage or a field party or uh, to playing opening up for a national and you selling tickets or like the flyers. And right. that's, that's, it's, it was a lot of hard work and it really, instills that kind of work ethic in you what you need to do and i think that's why brett and poison owned it and i know some of the past interviews you pulled out some of those amazing classic la flyers and yeah. that's what made the difference i mean i'm sure there was other things but to me that's what made the difference they just they 
everybody knew about and they just flyered every single thing you could do, you know put poison something. was everywhere in fact you know in right. that magazine poison was of course in there and then i had the flyer of theirs right from the sunset strip because i was coming out from arizona and then i would grab flyers and I'm like okay and i would just try and see them and i had a stack of them and, and when you look through the stack and a few of them actually made it most of them did not right right but you know it's the guys that stuck there and stuck there or if they didn't break it some guys who maybe didn't make it with a band but ended up playing in a, in a with a big act later on right because right. they stuck with it and they made friends and of course growing up in la for somebody would had to be better because you were in it you know for me to move out here was kind of like i didn't know anybody sure. you know, really nobody yeah but and that can be intimidating in a city like that so it, it was, it was, but, you know, within a year I was playing with one of the biggest rock stars in the world. And it was like, it was kind of um, a very surreal moment for sure. I was pinching myself to see if it was real, but it really kind of helped open some doors. Of course, people going, oh, you played with Rob Halford. Ooh, you know, mm -hmm. whereas people I had met previous to that were kind of like, they'd be standoffish to you. I'm like, hey, I just, you know, trying to make friends, trying to jam with people. But mm -hmm. all of a sudden they look at you a little different, like, oh, you played with, you know, Right, you're a rock guy, and all of a sudden you're you got a little bit more credit than you know you're right. coming from your hometown with a local being a local guy and a local guitar hero or whatever you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So it's, it's interesting, but it's you know it's all about just staying true to your craft and and having fun and you know treating people well. I think. Just, yep, those, those three points right there, you nailed it on the head, man. It's hard to you know do things for yourself and your band, and also be nice and kind to others and, 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 and you can, and, and it's, yeah. a lot of people do it and you don't need to just go, we're awesome coming to our world. You can go and be nice to other people. And, and I think that's, you know, I think that's gone a long way with a lot of Brett's fans is, is it, you know, the band gets out and you, you hang and you spend some time and you interact with people. And, and, and I think when you and I were growing up or a lot of us growing up in Drake and Drake too, like there was no meet and greets. You had no, no. Thought, hey, I'm gonna private message Tommy Lee. You know, right. I mean that shit didn't exist. No. So <laughs> you know what did exist though is is you would try and find out where a band was staying, and of course they're under a pseudo name. I right. remember finding finding the Scorpions that way when I was a kid. The Scorpions did were you? playing. I found out where they were at and went there, and they were really nice. They were all really cool. That's awesome. That's so like, awesome. <laughs> it was funny because. Uh, um, uh, what's his uh, Schenker Rudolph Schenker? I was talking to him and I was like, Yeah, my friend's going, Yeah, he's a really big Michael Schenker fan. He's like, Oh, great, great. Then he's going, Oh, he's a guitar player. Come down to our, our sound check next time we play. And I'm like, Right. <laughs> <laughs> my That's friend was funny. going, out, Why did you say that? And I was going, Oh, I didn't mean to say that, but it was just like, I guess it just kind of came out like, Yeah, you're really going to let me come to the sound check. And you know what? They probably would have. Yeah, they probably would have. They probably would have. <laughs> I mean, you look back now, like like the position you're in, you really don't goof with people and go come to soundcheck unless you're really okay with them being a soundcheck. Yeah, right. Right. Yep. Uh, you know, I don't. You know, but <laughs> but of course, it was much more difficult. I remember trying to find Kiss when Kiss would come around. They had their own jet, and you're like looking up in the sky. Is that the Kiss jet? Yeah, and right. You're trying to run around and find out where they're at. Oh, we try to do all that stuff. I mean, that was just kind of what you did. <laughs> you know, right. how yeah. else did you find your heroes or whatever? You know. <laughs> So oddly yeah. enough, the one that I did when I was younger, I was 13 years old, I snuck onto the bus of the monkeys. Mm. Yeah, I got to hang out with Davey and Peter and Mike and, and Mickey, and it was kind of bizarre. That's pretty cool. Right? That's out of all cool. the bands that I was like, because I was into Megadeth and Metallica and Motley Crue and Iron right. Maiden and Poison, and I snuck onto the monkeys bus. <laughs> <That's only laughs> it's probably, probably safer. <laughs> they were great guys man i thoroughly enjoyed it but yeah it was a uh, weird al yankovic and the monkeys at red rocks in colorado oh, oh nice yeah okay. we snuck around the wall and went down and got on their bus <laughs> that, that's fun that's yeah I, mean, I was telling matt when we were uh, when you were offline for a second that you know i'm not sure when we actually first met but that i do remember every time i see you you're always really outgoing and very friendly Right, which right. is always cool it's it's you know i appreciate that it's easy when you hey man you know you just like from the first time we ever met i just remember you being very approachable 
right very friendly guy which is cool you know yeah, and then yeah. i always go out and watch you guys play you know you see me back there behind you <laughs> or whatever the last time we played together was vegas it was uh red rock i guess vegas yep. it was the red rock resort red rock. yeah and i was sitting back on the little uh, there was a uh, little um road case behind you to your left but it was fun it was good yeah time. you know i didn't i didn't get to see jack that day i normally if we uh, have a gig together. I always try to say hi to him or whatever else, but uh, um, there's a lot going on. Our sound checks were different and everything else. And so I unfortunately didn't get to say hi to him. So, and I, he wasn't there by the time we went on, he wasn't around. So. Yeah. The rest of all the guys were gone. I don't know what was going on. Maybe they're gambling. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. for me, I was like, I was determined to go back out because I just wanted to, you know, beautiful and venue too. That resort's nice. It was nice. And then I met uh, one of your guests there. Um, the boxer. Leon, Leon yes. Spinks. Yes. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. I just heard from Brenda the other day. Um, but yeah, like l the first time I met Leon, you know, my dad and I just growing up back in the early boxing days, Sugar Ray Leonard and all that stuff. And and he was him and his wife were Brett fans, and they came to a show a few years back, 2014 or 15, and and I ended up going back to the center bar with Leon and his and his wife, Brenda. And I remember getting and talking to Leon. I'm like, dude, do you realize I said my dad would have a heart attack if he knew I was hanging out with Leon Spinks, the champ. And he ended up giving me like an ever Everlast boxing glove that, oh, that he cool. signed. And he gave me an eight by 10 of uh, uh, a signed. It was a picture of him when he beat Muhammad Ali. Um, but yeah, Leon's a good dude. Um, He's a good yeah, guy. I um, exchanged contacts and stuff and invited them out for a show we did um, last year, but I guess he wasn't doing too well. Yeah, so he's, he's, yeah he's still in bad health right now. So I'm. Yeah, it was kind of a bummer. I was like, hey, you know what? Come on out. I'm sure everybody would love to see him, you know? I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he loves that environment too. He does. Yeah. Uh, so if he didn't come out, he was definitely not feeling well. Yeah. Yeah, and she and Brenda's a Brenda's a hoot. So, she... yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh, frozen. Whatever. Catching up. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. Uh, no, it's like fast motion all of a sudden. Now nope, his audio's gone again. Yep, your yep. audio's gone again. Oh, audio's um... gone again. All right. Let's try it one more time, and then we'll. Uh... We'll do that there. So James Hyde's in the audience. We got to say a big proud hello and much love to James Hyde. He's just such a cool dude. Yeah, James. Cool dude. He's helping us right now. Actually, he's working on some angles with some people in his circles that he knows. I won't say any names to throw any pressure out there, but he's he's doing all he can for us, man. And I appreciate that about him because that helps us keep the show going every week here. All right, and, let's we, try one more time. and we are going to be switching and look, looking pretty like it's going to be pretty soon, right? Going over to Twitch TV. Yeah, it sounds like we got the contracts in. So all we got to do, do is finalize those contracts and we'll be making the over to Twitch. All right. We got you, Mike. Are we good? We are. Right, we are. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but. Well, you know, what's funny is one, before I, my audio goes out, um, at least the last two times, Robbie and I, I can see Robbie's and then. His voice stops and a, a real fast thing happens and then yep. I drop out. So it's something yep. with the signal. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, then all of a sudden it looks like you're in fast motion. What yeah. happens to you right before my audio goes? Oh, okay. Out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's kind of. What? <laughs> I got it. <you>. Ah. <laughs> oh, man. Bro. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so let's name the websites again, Mike, so that these people can. Get on and find it. So we got www.customdrumdecor.com. Custom Custom and uh, both uh, Facebook and Instagram are uh, .com forward slash custom drum decor. All just spelled out. Um, yeah, if you on Instagram, like that and follow, uh, follow on Instagram yeah. because I'm doing a lot of posts, a lot of new stuff. Uh, the website has a thing where I put products up there. You can just straight up buy, but there's also a form if you want to get like, um, in fact, I brought this out. This was something I made. Um, oh, no way. So now I don't have it in a, in a drum hoop right now. I haven't put it wow. on there, 
this is one I actually made for Jack and I shipped it to Jack. And, oh, cool. and I told Jack he can have it. He can sell it if he wants to, to raise money for whatever he needs to or whatever. But I actually cool. made this one and, and I, I didn't, you know, when you're making stuff, you're a little, particular about stuff i didn't like what was going on with something like this so i just kind of you know and i made another one so this is the one i have in my back room um but nice. if anybody has any ideas like uh, of their favorite band or or a, mu uh, a music quote or whatever it is you know I, i'm putting them on clocks and on bass drums with lights in them you know doing all kinds of creative stuff cool. so yeah very cool but i appreciate you guys helping me uh, pitch this and and get yeah. the word out about the site it's helping me be creative, um, but also, you know, make some funds while we're all kind of down right now. Not now. Are you in a position to be able to record yourself right now? Do you have a, 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 your own studio or anything where you record your drums or no? I've got, um, I'm actually going on uh, the 14th. I'm scheduled to record locally as a buddy of mine. Uh, he's an engineer. So I'm going to go on this. I'm going to the studio on the 14th to do like four or five songs with a band that I was with prior to B&B &B, and the singer, bass player and the guitar player. And we're gonna re release a few songs. Nothing like insanely serious. It's more or less about us having this time now and then and collaborate, collaborating again. And, and they're good friends and they're, they're really, really good songs too. So cool. uh, I, do have, cool. I do have somewhere I can record. There's a couple different studios locally that I can hit. Um, cool. and, yeah. and both of them just happen to be engineered by drummers. So, uh, which makes me happy because there's no, you know, I can bounce ideas if there's a different feel, you know, I think he'll be honest about like what might or might not sound good or, you know, whatever it might be, but uh, it's a very comfortable yeah. environment for me. Cool. So, yeah. You know, I hate, I hate guitar players going, all right, we need to get this in one take. Let's hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I'm actually not that way. I, I, I interactive with my drummer people. I'm, I'm actually that way with everybody that I work with though. Yeah, I'm tracking somebody. It's all about getting the performance out of them, whatever it takes. Right. However many times it takes. And if it's not right, I'm going to be throwing ideas out. But I always like to let people express themselves before I jump in and say, hey, no, you should. No, I want to see what you Absolutely. I want you to be you, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's great. Cool. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to doing some uh, doing a couple songs, putting those cans on, playing to a click track and getting nice. some songs down and. And I've been playing my kit here. I got a new Pearl kit for my uh, birthday in July. So um, it's a Wait. red acrylic kit and I got it right behind me and I got the John Bonham sizes. So I got a 24 wow. oh, like yeah. 14 kick and a 13 inch rack and 16 and 18. Uh, so they sound amazing. Cause I've always gone with like a 22 inch kick. And so this is a little bit bigger. Yeah, and I'm just I, I'm having so much fun playing this kit right now. So uh, and it's been a while since I've had time to just sit down and just practice. And that's been a huge thing with this time off. I've actually enjoyed getting back to just me sitting around making some mistakes and, you know, going over the same thing about 10 times, something a little tricky or intricate or whatever yeah. it might be. I haven't been able to do that for a while. It's just been like muscle memory and just playing. And yeah. Yeah, now I'm playing songs like the headphones with stuff I haven't done in a long time or never tried. I've been jamming a lot of Daughtry lately. Love Daughtry. Um, nice. Yeah. So. Cool. Nice. Yeah. All time Excellent. favorite drummer. One name right off the top of your head. Go. Say it. I'm sorry. What's the question? All time favorite drummer. One name off the top of your head. No thinking. Name it. Oh, uh, Tommy Lee. Okay. Tommy Lee. Yeah. Tommy Lee. I just, I think. Um, I just think from a rock and roll attitude uh, to playing, uh, you know, I mean, he just, he encompasses everything that rock and roll is. Um, right. Never met Tommy, not, you know, not saying I really want to go meet him and get in his world. I like the, this, you know, me seeing what, you know, just his innovation with all the touring, with the roller coasters and all the different stuff. And um, him trying to play outside the box sometimes with either the hip hop stuff or this or that or whatever. Um, right. I dig it. You know, I dig all the, all the different genres of music. So um, I can appreciate, you know, Tommy's thing, you know, but, um, but, I, you know, I'm glad you just off the top of my head because there's so many drummers and I hate to say he's the guy, but you know, right. Yeah. Well, that was a James Hyde question for you. So I, I wanted that pure 
All right. All right. I'm not there. So. All right. That's cool. All right. Mike, I can't thank you enough for joining us tonight, brother. Now, Robbie and I were talking a little bit when your when your deal froze up on you that we are switching over to Twitch here pretty soon. All right. I know that Robbie and I are planning to do a roundtable show where we bring a lot of our guests back and do kind of like we did last week, right? Right, Robbie? Yeah. yeah way, cool. Bring in a bunch of our, our past guests. We'd love to have you come back with us and and yeah, come and hang with some other artists, you know, whether they're actors or producers or whoever it might be. And we just right. all kind of uh, just Absolutely. shoot shit. Really. Hey, I'll be on any time, guys, for real. Like, I appreciate uh, what you guys are doing and, and uh, being creative with this outlet and building on it. You have a great show. And, and mm -hmm. you know what I can do? I could, <clears throat> I could be the co-co-host behind <laughs> Robbie. And I could set up a webcam and I could just sit behind my drums. And when Robbie says something funny... You know, I just do a little boom bap thing or whatever, you know. You know, I'm not opposed to that. At just throwing all. the ideas. I could be like Max Weinberg, but without a band around me, you know, just there you go. Those. Now I'm you're talking. I think Robbie's into it. We might have to talk. Idea guy. All right. You know, why don't we feed the mayonnaise to the tuna fish? I'm an idea man. It blew my mind. <laughs> 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 all right my brother thank you so much i appreciate you i'm gonna text you here soon all right and, uh, man I, I can't thank you enough for coming on tonight. thank you robbie love you buddy i miss you guys drake yeah. everything, and and thank you again call anytime i'll participate anytime cool it's good seeing you and hopefully you'll be seeing you on the road at some yes. point here i know hopefully you can i you know i always do the fist bump you know yep. so yep or okay. you know whatever the elbow however works but you know <laughs> whatever we need to do <laughs> hey, you know, as long as we can get out and play, it'd be great. Yes, sir. Yeah. And if you ever got any songs, you want any drums on, I can record out here. Cool. You know what? I'm working with a bunch of different people right now. Working with uh, Leroy Butler, the oh. singer from the Baja Men. We're doing some tracks. and Awesome. You know, That's great. That might be cool. That's uh. Yeah, one, yeah, you never know what comes down the road, man. If there's some, like, little thing you just want me to throw something onto, I'm, you know, I'd be, be awesome. to something with you. Yeah, you know, he great. and I are supposed to be working on a song together, too, so. Right. There's that. Right? Who is? Robbie and I. Oh, well, I can't wait to hear that. You Are you singing, Drake? I am, yes. Is it going to be a country song? It's probably going to be. Probably going to be country. With that, yeah. with that range, I'm thinking you should do something like that with that voice, you know? Right. Yeah. Maybe a little Trace Atkins, somewhere in that range. Right, right. You know, Maybe Doug between... Uh, Trace Atkins and uh, the singer from Stained, um, Aaron Lewis. Oh, yeah. yeah, there we go. Could do an Aaron Lewis, you know, a little grungy little country thing or something, you know. There we go. There Robbie, we go. Ready, Robbie, you're ready, huh? See, I'm liking it now, yeah. brother. There you go. He, he, yeah. He's got to play the beat on our, on our track, Robbie. That's all there is to it, brother. Hey, I'm there for you. I'm there. Cool. Right on, my brother. Hey, right. thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Mike, from the heart, yeah. brother. Thanks so much, man. That was Mike Bailey from the Brett Michaels Band. Obviously a class act, very humble, and a very good human being. Yeah, no, great guy. Like I said, every time I see him, he's always that same even-keeled, nice guy. There's never any weirdness, which is nice. It's nice. It's nice to be nice, it's as so Gomer nice. Pyle would say. <laughs> so nice to be nice. So next week, we got Ethelson. Yes. Ethelson. Megadeth. Megadeth. Come on, founding father of Megadeth, bro. Right. Do you know how many times I've sat alone in the darkness playing Symphony of Destruction? <laughs> Do you? Be awkward if you did. Yeah, that would be awkward. It's even no, that's that's going to be cool. Back. It's going to be very cool. Looking forward to that for sure. He's uh, quite the bassist. I did a jam, uh, Montrose jam, a little while back where he was playing bass with one of the bands. I didn't play with him, but I was standing right beside his amp. And I was like, oh, man, he played so tight, so good. And I don't even know if they rehearsed. I have no idea because most of the bands don't. They get up and play. But I'm like, man, this guy is spot on. Right. Real deal. Wow, brother. I can't wait. Holy so, deal. Next week. Hey, tomorrow's the big day, obviously, November 3rd. Make sure you get out and vote. Uh, I'll, I'll straight, say it straight up. You can't bitch if you don't cast your vote. Right? I already voted. I voted, too. I voted on Friday. 
Same here. Same here. In fact, Jess couldn't make it with us tonight um, to ask the questions because she's actually at the polls right now voting. She might be home by now, but she was, yeah, she was at the polls. She's home? I don't know. I Because I'm in the studio. The wife could be. Home. Oh, she is home. Yeah, they communicate, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, my brother. Well, I'll see you next week. Let's uh, let's have a good week. Hopefully, everything remains calm. I know they are bracing for some civil unrest this week. Um, hopefully, that gets avoided and we can continue on and and get things improved. There you go. Keep on the right track, baby. All right, it's Drake. It's Lochner. It's the Hangout Live. Much love. We'll see you next time.